Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, and this time we'll discuss the argument from natural order. This is similar to the teleological argument in some ways. Premise 1. If God doesn't exist, none of the forces of nature can be directed towards any goal or end. Premise 2. At least some of the forces of nature are directed towards some goal or end. Conclusion. Therefore, God exists. Let's look at the evidence for each premise in turn. Premise 1. Things that don't have free will don't act to accomplish any goal or end unless they're designed to do so. To use a previous example, a ripple in a pond doesn't have any goal or end to accomplish, but a computer does. It fulfills the goals it was designed to fulfill. However, forces of nature are just that, impersonal forces like gravity or electromagnetism, which aren't capable of having free will or of making goal-based decisions. If they act to accomplish a goal, it can only be because they were designed to do so. Premise 2. We see in the world around us that the major forces of nature act according to certain rules, repeatedly doing the same kind of thing and reacting with each other the same way. Because of this, a state of affairs has come about which makes it possible for intelligent life to exist, as well as allowing many other things like motion, chemistry, air pressure, and so on, which all require tremendous precision from those natural forces. Clearly, that's all good evidence that those forces are directed towards some goal, and there's little or no evidence that they're not directed towards some goal. Conclusion As long as both premises are true, the conclusion follows from them. If the forces of nature have a goal or end, then God must exist to provide that goal or end. Now, before I get into objections to this argument, I feel like I should point out that this is not one of the arguments that I defend. It's not that I don't think it's sound, I think both premises are true, and the conclusion follows from them. It's just that I think it's easier to use the teleological argument than it is to prove premise 2 to a skeptic. If someone has already rejected the existence of God, they'll naturally try to deny that the forces of the universe are aimed at some goal, and usually, the evidence for the teleological argument is the best way to combat that denial. But in that case, why not just use the teleological argument instead and cut out the middleman? In any case, though, the objections. Objection 1. You claim that things that lack free will can't set goals for themselves, but when a cat goes after a mouse, that's a goal it sets, yet cats don't have free will. Reply. This isn't a very strong counter-argument, because actually there's a lot of evidence that the behavior of cats and other animals like them is more about association than decision-making. If cats had the ability to set goals for themselves, they would have free will. If not, they might just be acting on an automatic behavior pattern instilled in them by adaptation or what have you. Or they might be acting to accomplish a goal put into them by their own designer. Still, even if I admitted that this was an exception to what I said, it wouldn't disprove premise one. Objection two. Even people who have free will often don't work towards any goal or end. Reply. True, but they can. Unless people are unable to work towards a goal or end, that wouldn't refute my reasoning, much less premise one. Objection three. Even if God doesn't exist, some sufficiently advanced alien might be able to direct the forces of nature towards some goal. Reply. This is actually a really good objection. But then the question becomes, where did that alien come from? If the alien is the one that directs the forces of nature towards their goal of fostering intelligent life, that means that before the alien existed, they didn't have any such goal. So how did the alien come to be? How did it manage to survive for long enough in a universe with forces that didn't encourage the development of intelligent life? The only way that I can think of to escape this is to suggest that the alien exists necessarily, in which case what you call an alien is actually just God under a different name. Objection 4. Just because the forces of nature are in an unlikely configuration, or accomplishing something unlikely, or even are very orderly, that doesn't prove that they're actually directed towards a goal. Reply. This is the big reason why I don't use this argument myself. It doesn't, in fact, prove that they're directed towards a goal. Nevertheless, all of those things are evidence that they're directed towards a goal, so while this argument by itself isn't conclusive proof, it's still more reasonable to believe what the evidence tells us, that the forces of nature are directed towards a goal. 
Next time, can the resurrection of Jesus teach us about God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.